Welcome to The Reality Revolution. I'm your host, Brian Scott. Today I wanted to read a classic quote channeling that's very recent. It covers a variety of topics. Sometimes it's hard to find a title for some of these. This one covers a whole variety of different things. One of the questioners has a throat issue and you kind of learn how they analyze it in metaphysical terms. There's questions about Mars and Maldak and news media and trustworthy sources dual activated entities, wanderers, astrology, and tarot. It's all very interesting. Quo is a group of high density beings that answer spiritual questions channeled through a group called LL Research. They are related intrinsically to Ra and the Law of One, as they make up a variety of different entities that channel through this group. We have covered them through a variety of different eras and topics and each time we learn more and it resonates deeply within me and that's why I like to cover this material. So we begin with a channeling delivered on November 10th, 2022. We are Quo and we greet this circle in the love and in the light of the one infinite creator. As usual, we are overjoyed to in be invited to join you in your journey of seeking and particularly in this gathering, we are encouraged to find that you have gathered with a desire to practice and to become better channels so that you may go forth in your chosen service as channels for the confederation of planets in service to the infinite creator. We find that in joining you for what can be called practice is what could be seen from our perspective as what you would define as fun or as a game, for it allows us to experience the dynamic of our shared service in new ways and experience with you the thrill of new and novel experiences. We ask before we begin our typical disclaimer in this session particularly as it carries a unique quality that any response that we offer be evaluated by the individual seeker's heart and that the sensibilities and discernment of the seeker be applied to any words that we share for this allows us to engage with you as fellow seekers attempting to offer service to each other and not as authorities prescribing a certain path to you. At this time, we would ask if there are any queries to which we may respond. Yes, Quo, thank you for being with us today and for participating in our experiment to learn to be better channels to test our limits and to prepare ourselves for the coming public meditations. I have a question about myself. I would like to know what the metaphysical source of this recurring throat issue that I have is. I experience quite a bit of pain in my throat, often due to what medicine says is acid reflux, silent reflux that is, but I would like to know what the spiritual and metaphysical or even the psychological source of this is. We are Quo and we are aware of the query, my brother. We would include an additional preface to our response, even the context that this circle has gathered for a specific purpose of practicing accepting and responding to questions that emulate those questions that might come from what you call a public channeling meditation setting. In this particular setting, as you have gathered today in emulating these questions, we would like to point out that the environment is still quite different from what you might experience because of the energies that are present. For it is not simply the questions that are asked that may influence our ability to respond to the questions, but also the presence of those within the circle that contribute to the overall quality of the contact and our ability to respond in certain ways. With this in mind, we may respond to your question with a notion that we believe is already present within the mind of the questioner. And that is, that such information may be confirmed if it is already present within the mind of the questioner. We find that this dynamic has its own value and that reframing one's understanding with new words, even though they contain simple confirmation, may spark new insight into the dynamic given to the seeker who asked the question. In this specific case, we may reflect to you, my brother, that the answers to this question can be found through examining the symbolic nature of what you are experiencing within the throat region of the body complex and what has been defined by your traditional medical professionals as the cause, that being the acid reflux. For there is a dynamic present, not just in the traditional view of the throat as the source of communication in an outward sense, but also in an inward sense that it may symbolize that which is consumed. 
physically and otherwise. And the acid reflux being a response of the digestive system that may indicate the quality of that which is consumed and how the body as system processes that which is consumed. To speak further upon this, as you may be aware, would risk violating the free will of the questioner. But we encourage the questioner to contemplate the dynamic that we have spoken about beyond the bounds of the practice that this circle engages in currently, for it is relevant to the service of being a vocal channel for the Confederation in various ways. Is there another query to which we may respond? Yes, thank you, Quo. We understand from the raw contact that our neighboring planet Mars destroyed its biosphere, causing its third density population to need to be relocated. Now Mars, at least from our perspective, seems to be a planet void of biological life, barren and rocky. So I'm wondering, what chain of events led to the destruction of Mars' biosphere? Did it occur in an instant, or was it gradual? How did the population respond to this destruction? We are quo, and we are aware of the query, my brother. To the extent that we can address this question through this instrument, both given the limitations that you are testing in this particular session of exploring knowledge beyond the bounds contained within the instrument, as well as the factor of free will, which is a factor in the scenario for the population that existed upon the planet that you call Mars, is indeed continuing to work with this catalyst upon your own planet and within your current density. For this reason, the answer must be veiled somewhat beyond even the bounds of what this instrument may respond to from his own knowledge. To speak about the timeline or time frame of such a destruction, one must consider the relative nature of time in that from the perspective of of the evolution of a planet even within the bounds of third density a momentary destruction from one perspective may indeed still be slow from a different perspective for a matter of years is but a blink of an eye from the greater perspective of cosmic evolution in this sense we can say that the bellicose attitudes and the intention of aggression and harm between various populations on the planet of mars led to a scenario in which there was a gradual decline in the biosphere due to literal destruction of ecosystems. This gradual decline was exacerbated as energies escalated and weaponry and attitudes became far more destructive in nature as the desire for destruction grew. Thus you may see a slow decline of both ecosystem and population for a matter of time that eventually concluded with a singular event that spawned a much quicker decline that being what you would experience as a matter of months because of weaponry that disrupted a central aspect of the planetary ecosystem being that life-giving force of water and the cycle of water. Through this disruption of the cycle of water, there was a chain of events that unfolded in which the ecosystem itself deteriorated and the soul of the planet, as you may understand it, faded, thus resulting in a deterioration of what you would recognize as a magnetosphere, thus solidifying the lack of ability of life to again take grasp upon this planet. We reiterate that this catalyst of destruction is continuing to be processed and explored upon your own planet and within your own population. And you may draw correlations between what you witness upon your planet currently and its relationship to the planet as an ecosystem and what unfolded upon the red planet. Is there a follow-up to this question, my brother? Very intriguing stuff, Quo. Thank you. Well, since we're able to gain some window into the Mars experience, the more fruitful avenue of inquiry here would be to explore the ongoing use of that destructive catalyst. But I'll sidestep for a moment over to Mars' former neighbor, what Ra identifies as Maldek. According to Ra, that planet, excuse me, the population of that planet literally exploded the planet and destroyed it. I can imagine what energies of bellicosity and division went into that. But I'm wondering... How such an outcome came about? Through what mechanism or weaponry did they destroy a planet? One and two, was this suicidal destruction? Or was it an inadvertent outcome of the exercise of weaponry? We are quote and are aware of the query, my brother. We find the inquiry of whether this destruction was self-conscious destruction that intended to destroy the planet of Maldek, or whether it was a circumstance of a lesser destruction, you may say, to be insightful and intriguing. And we believe that you may find inroads into exploring that intentional self-destruction that you have termed suicidal, the type of what has been described as weaponry, 
while we may not explore this in a technological sense, may better be viewed as an exploration and a study of the inner workings of the planet itself, and how a population upon a planet's surface may influence the very dynamic, meaningful, and living processes beneath the surface of the planet, extending down deep to its very core. This was both a technological and spiritual understanding that was gained and then allowed for the destruction of the planet itself, and the tendencies towards that suicidal notion were very much present in the inception of this destruction. We find that this instrument feels adequately exercised for this session, and we'll now take our leave and transfer this contact to the one known as Gary. We are, quote, Gary Channeling. We are those known to you as the principle of Quo. It has been some time since we have been with this instrument, but despite his concerns about his ability, we find a high degree of readiness and receptivity. We appreciate this group's willingness to, as you would say, step outside of the comfort zone in a spirit of growth in seeking to engage this service on a deeper level and to be available for those seekers who have questions upon their hearts and minds. But all of those questions you will find to be conducive to this contact whether that be due to limitations of free will or a poorly formed question or the limitations of conscious channeling that are inherent with an instrument who is fully awake and aware and participatory in the process, clothing our concepts in their own words and language, filtering our message through their own worldview, biases, knowledge base, experience, personality traits, and so forth. We applaud this group's effort to test the selves before being available in that sort of environment. And once again, we would reiterate the request that any consumption of our message through this session or others would be undertaken with some salt in front of one for the serving, which is an idiom to request that the seeker always exercise their highest discernment when analyzing our words through these instruments. With that, we would open this instrument to questions. We are those known to you as, quote, I have a question, quote, it has become increasingly difficult to understand in our social environment what constitutes a trustworthy source of information and figuring out how to determine the truth of what's happening in the world, particularly as it pertains to outlets known as news media. I was wondering if you could recommend a particular news outlet that is the most trustworthy for us. We are those known to you as Quo, and we laugh at the conclusion of this question for we felt it was on a great track before taking that well-designed turn to, as we spoke previously, emulate conditions that you as instruments may encounter. Now, we would be glad to let you know which cable news network is among our favorites and most unbiased, reliable sources of information, but we fear it may upset some of your population. So we will refrain with the remark that we, of course, speak in jest. Not only do we have no such thing as favorite, but we could not identify for you which source of information contains the least distortion in the news offering, the least agenda, the least corrupting influence from political and economic power, etc. To do so would be to interfere, not only in the seeker's individual journey by doing the learning for them, but to interfere in the planetary game and its outcome, which can only be discovered and chosen by your peoples, not by us, who do not live and operate in a body upon the physical plane within the limitations and gifts of the third density experience. We will note, however, that that quarter of human activity which you call the news, whether it be via that which is known to you as social media, legacy news, the television, or that news which spreads by word of mouth through your cultures is a vital organ and aspect of the individual and collective movement through third density. As an organ, if you may see it that way, it is something of the whole's ability to make sense of itself, to understand and interpret the events of the world. Even more so, it may be seen as analogous to the faculty of attention within the self, or as this instrument was recently reading in a book, the experience of consciousness within the third density plane can be likened to being in an immensely, impossibly large, darkened warehouse where the self roams only with the flashlight shining that light of attention onto that shelf there or that doorway over there and so forth, illuminating only a portion of the experience of the mind at any one time through the spotlight of the attention and not often successfully interpreting 
what is being seen given the lack of holistic overview of that which is being taken in. The news media operates much like this attention on a collective level. What is it that the light of attention is being shined upon? What is being revealed? Is there that light shined a function of inquiry of a spiritual evolutionary nature? Or is it a function of increasing profit, as you say clicks? Is that light shown in order to conduct social engineering upon your peoples? And so forth. These are some questions the seeker may use in discerning the veracity of any particular given source of information, including our own. We would conclude with empathy for your plight. As you're inundated in a sea of conflicting information, where intentionally biased sources of information may be, through their careful manipulation, understood to be sharing truth, whereas the more, shall we say, neutral and dispassionate sources may be understood oppositely. It is a challenge, to say the least, for any of your peoples, whether of a strong intellectual or intuitive slant, to understand what is really happening within any given dynamic or situation. Trust is a glue which keeps a society coherent and capable of making sense of itself and its environment and its desires and values, and as that erodes on a societal and institutional level, then fragmentation follows, and your peoples have not been known to navigate fragmentation with the heart open. We would, in closing, encourage the ever-valuable faculties of patience and the light touch in sifting through information, whatever the source may be, knowing that something of value can be found from a multitude of voices, even those one does not agree with, or those which do not confirm for one automatically the worldview which they are comfortable. We would open now to a follow-up or other question where those are quote. Thank you, Quill. I'll read between the lines and understanding that ESPN is the greatest source of accurate news. I have a different line of queries regarding what those of Ra referred to as dual-bodied or dual-activated entities those being fourth density entities who are incarnating into an environment like ours that is transitioning from third density to fourth density. When Ra first spoke about these in the 80s, they said this was a relatively new phenomena, and there were relatively few of these individuals at the time. So I'm wondering if you could give us an update, perhaps some kind of percentage of population of how many of these entities exist on the planet at this time. We are those known to you as the principal of Quo, and we are interested in attempting this query through this instrument. First, however, we would caveat that the questioner was mistaken in that our preferred source would be the Cartoon Network. However, ESPN, as you identify it, is not without its value as well. The situation of the fourth, we correct this instrument of the third density, harvestable being incarnating upon your planet at this time as the dual activated entity is one which has increased in quantity. We give this instrument a percentage in the one-third range that is roughly 33% to this instrument's discomfort in transmitting such hard knowledge or hard facts and the uncertainty about speaking such things. We can affirm that through the process of incarnation, more such entities are being born and are commencing their work upon your planet to continue watering the seeds and laying more seeds in the collective consciousness that through time will burst forth from the soil if not already shooting up in the form of sprouts and grow further into fully blossomed realization about the nature of love and the divine essence of each entity. And in that world, your experience, these dual activated beings are finding one another more readily upon your plane and forming community of various sorts, whether local or non-local and shared mission that seeks through the tumult and confusion to which these entities are not immune themselves to work gradually toward the healing of the planet and the people to make way for the birth of a new world. These entities find there is a good deal of work to do, too much in fact. Often they may experience a sense of overwhelm or burnout themselves and may be afflicted with the many distortions which permeate your world, but these entities have inherent in their being the need and desire to do this work though they may be unable to fully identify or understand it. On a collective level, that work happens largely off the radar, shall we say. To connect to our previous response, the collective spotlight of the news media, for the most part, 
does not fully recognize this work being undertaken or its potential for transformation for a variety of reasons, including those that we already mentioned, along with the collective mindset and the sinkhole of indifference being stuck largely in an old story on a systemic level. But the door has been cracked open to these new energies, and those who will help to steward this transition are streaming in through that cracked door. We would take this opportunity to encourage those assaulted by the daily barrage of, as you would say, bad news from the world, to take hope. To put into simple terms, but never less true, that love is here. And those attuned to this vibration, confused though their patterns of mentation may be, are strengthening that vibration and planting it ever more firmly into the ground beneath the feet. All who, through this maze of the catalyst, with which you grapple, seek the open heart, which seeks to find, to experience, to embody, and to channel love in every situation, for every person, regardless of the stories circulating about, is participating in this work, be they dual activated or activated only in that body, which is conventional for third density, that being the third density yellow ray body complex. We would take one more query through this instrument before transferring this contact. We are those known to you as Quo. Thank you for that, Quo. In that same topic, you were describing kind of the role of these entities will play in the task before them. I would like to explore a bit more about sort of the specific individual nature of the dual activated entity. I think we can infer from the raw contact that they have these two bodies activated at the same time in order to better appreciate the fourth density energies that are available on our planet at this time while also existing within what is still a third density environment. Could you describe a little bit more about the experience of being able to appreciate those and how it contrasts to somebody who does not have an active fourth density body? And then what that kind of individual who has both bodies activated, what they can do to utilize that in their service? We are those of Quo and appreciate this well-articulated question and would give voice to that which was circulating through the instrument's own mind of his appreciation for this particular environment. You asked about the contrast between the experience of the dual activated entity to the non-dual activated entity and how said dual activated entity can make use of this experience. The dual activated being who is operating upon your plane at this time may manifest their dual activated nature in ways unique to their idiosyncratic path of service. In broad terms, it does involve an expansion of some faculty of sensing or awareness. That expanded awareness takes on some flavors of holistic understanding and that they are able to pierce or move beyond or transcend, to a degree, the self-limiting old stories of which we were speaking, seeking, if not outright disengagement with those stories, then being uninspired by them in the recognition that there is a better and higher way. Their dual activated expanded awareness may seek then that new way. It will likely come packed, we clarify two words, come packed with a more vibrant and vivid experience of the nature of unconditional love for the self and others. Though as with all third density beings, they may struggle with self-denying, self-judging, self-hating aspects that are conditioned into the self unconsciously absorbed. Their expanded awareness may lead to or open the way for greater connection. In intimacy, particularly with the first and second density realms of your planetary sphere and all the biological and non-biological life therein, they may exercise a greater sensitivity to the suffering of others. In rare cases, we would say there may be some ability which you would consider paranormal or supernatural due to this dual activated connection, but that is far from the norm at this time. Beings of this nature are not here yet to demonstrate such powers but to be radiant, crystalline beacons of love, to lighten the planetary vibration, and to infuse the collective consciousness with an ambiance of loving those who are perceived to be other or enemy or in the opposing camp, to unifying the fault lines between peoples and between people and the earth. Through this healing, melting influence of love as those of Roth phrased it. There will come a time when miracles, as you may describe it, from your present vantage point will be more readily available to those who have dedicated themselves in service to the one infinite creator through unconditional love. 
we would before closing remind each that whether or not dual activated each has the highest potential within third density to liberate the self from old forms that they may serve through love and communication and embodiment of the sacramental quality of the present moment the dual activated entity may have just more of an inbuilt magnetic attraction to and in some cases even ability for this work but contingent upon the choices of each third density entity and their exercise of will and faith the way is open for all at this time we would with gratitude to the circle and this instrument transfer our contact to the one known as trisha we are those known to you as the principle of quo trisha channeling we are those of quo and we are now with this instrument before asking if there are any queries that we may speak to through this instrument we would like to issue a note of gratitude and appreciation for the collection of souls gathered here today to progress or attempt to challenge their own abilities in this art or practice of channeling as this instrument prayed in her tuning this particular session requires a most potent balance between bravery and meekness open-heartedness and wisdom welcoming and discernment therefore the strength and the safety that is fostered by this circle of seekers is powerful in that it provides this particular environment this environment which is one wherein each instrument may take a further step in their journey and in their seeking and in their practice at this time we would ask if there is a query to which we may speak thank you Ho. that was i took inspiration from that i would like to know if i'm a wanderer and if so what density am i from we are those of quo and we are aware of the query my brother though we can recognize that this particular question comes from a place of desiring to understand the self in its truest and most basic form in pure intention we feel that this particular line of questioning is one that would if spoken to infringe upon the free will of the question asker we would also add that this particular set of information the questioner seeks though it may provide a sense of relative comfort or understanding is ultimately not for the instrument to as you may say no at this time the designation of wanderer or density is ultimately not of great import for the seeker in this incarnation at least in the sense of having concrete unmoving proof or identification as such but the questioner may mine from this particular line of query though as an opportunity to witness the self and observe the self through the eyes of the self's inner guides or higher self we would venture further in this direction by stating that the motivation for knowing this information may highlight a larger desire on the part of the questioner therefore we would suggest that the questioner sit with what is motivating the self to ask or seek this confirmation or this information for we feel that the identification itself is a guidepost or a magnet a compelling force towards one of attraction for the soul to discover something larger about the self for the soul to understand that which it truly seeks the classification of the self as that which is this or not this is perhaps a larger question of where the self can find unity within separation where one can explore the connectedness of all that overrides these aspects of our illusion that identify and classify and group self and other self perhaps that is the seed that will allow the seeker desiring such information the inspiration or direction in which to pursue to take into moments of silence and to ask of their higher self their intuition may we ask if there's a follow-up or additional query at this time thank you quo in the raw contact raw discussed the archetypical mind and how we could explore it using the tarot as a basis they also mentioned that the studies of astrology and the kabbalah are valid ways to explore it as well they described exploring the tarot and a means of exploring the tarot by way of viewing the images and drawing symbolism from those could you give an overview of how studying the tarot from an astrological point of view might be done any inroads into how one who is familiar with astrology could use that to explore the archetypical mind we are those of quo and we are aware of the query my brother apologies for the deep exhalation of this instrument for she is feeling the experience of that of a child wearing his father's business suit at his corporate annual meeting of the board that is all to say this query is perfectly designed to test this instrument's what she would call pay grade the studies of the tarot and astrology indeed may be helpful instruments through which a seeker can understand or study or develop and discover new realms of application 
of these archetypes, the archetypes that underlie and manifest through the illusion. For one who is knowledgeable of the study of astrology, seeking an inroad into the use of the tarot and its application to the archetypes, we would suggest, through the humble and limited understanding of this particular instrument, that the seeker first familiarize the self with the iconography, the imagery, which is associated with both fields of study, tarot and astrology. Take the time to digest and observe the depictions of the various cards and the interpretations that are connected to the astrological formations. From those observations, we would suggest that the seeker look for perhaps explicit and implicit patterns of connection, be that repeating imagery or themes or even something as subtle as energetic intuition. Feeling inwardly a connection between the two fields of study, perhaps a particular tarot image and a particular astrological sign. From there, where connections are made, if made, the self may perhaps conduct study of how these connections are in relationship with specific archetype. That is, how a connection between the particular element of astrology is related to a particular element of tarot, and zooming, as you might say, more inward to see the underlying archetype that is connected to that element of the tarot. We would also suggest that the seeker who is studied or interested in astrology may find those connections of archetypes this instrument is feeling resistance to saying this due to her own lack of understanding, but that those connections between astrology and the archetypes need not warrant the use of the tarot, that particular connections or meanings can be distilled without the addition of another school of thought. This is not to say that the tarot is only useful in certain circumstances or that astrology is likewise limited in its ability. Instead, what we are attempting to state through this instrument is that the inclination of the seeker the discernment and attraction the seeker feels towards a particular belief system or other means of understanding or making sense of the illusion is of ultimate import and not necessarily defined. That is, there is no singular source that one may use to understand or apply these notions of the archetype. Rather, each fragment of the creator, each self, is an infinitely unique arrangement. Thereby, it is to be understood that their path of understanding or seeking or utilizing these tools would be just as unique, just as complex and broad. We would state to the seeker wishing to establish this connection to also ask itself its motivation for establishing such a connection. If the seeker is really attempting to make that connection between astrology and tarot because they feel that they must in order to understand the archetypes, we would ask that the seeker meditate on that attempt to understand that motivation. For the universe and this creation is ripe and pregnant with innumerable avenues for discovery and contemplation. Limit the self not, but instead allow the self to speak freely, utilizing the discernment alongside the open mind. This instrument feeling as though she just delivered an ill-prepared fourth grade book report on a book she did not open is also a feeling as though her ability to continue is at a deficit at this moment. We would again, through this instrument, issue our gratitude for this dynamic, this configuration that allowed all instruments to feel safe, allowed each one to be vulnerable and encouraged to each to be brave. We are delighted to see this attempt and look forward to what ground and confidence is gained from such a practice. At this time, we shall take our leave of this instrument and transfer contact for a final time to the one known as Austin. We are those of Quo. We are Quo. And we are again with this instrument. We offer our sincere gratitude and admiration for this instrument's gathered in this circle. It has been a pleasure to us to experience the unique dynamic design for this working. For while we understand that there is some discomfort and anxiety involved in the exercises that you have prepared for this working to engage with these uncomfortable feelings is somewhat thrilling for us and we appreciate the sincere effort in preparing as instruments to better serve in this capacity we would offer a final note of encouragement and guidance towards the discomfort felt during the session for the request for information that seems completely outside the realm of the instrument's own expertise or bounds of knowledge. It is a good thing for an instrument to be well-informed and to have a well-rounded worldview full of understanding and knowledge to draw from in performing as an instrument in this capacity. But the muscle being exercised during this working is equally, if not more, important for an instrument 
That is the muscle of openness and bravery in taking a step into the unknown to be willing to speak words that one is unsure are correct or irrelevant are meaningful to the question that was asked. We hope that in the exercise, those present engaging in this unique dynamic have become more comfortable taking that step and will continue to open the self to the unknown and allow for the inspiration and information that flows during this process of channeling to come from that place of unknowing for it is through this dynamic that the most engaging and inspirational messages may arise. We leave you as we found you in the comfort and joy of the love and light of the one infinite creator. We are those of Quo, Adonai, my friends. Adonai, Vasu, Boragas. Now, I really enjoyed this particular channeling, first of all, due to its recency. The more recent channelings are fascinating. Remember, none of the people channeling Quo in this are the same people that we've read in other episodes. So you can see the consistency in the way that Quo speaks through different channels. This to me adds a greater level of authenticity. How can one person 30 years later be speaking in the same syntax as those other channelings? This to me makes Quo much more relevant than other teachers who are channeling perhaps their own higher self or only that person can channel that information. So I find that super interesting. It's important. We find out a lot of new stuff in this one. There's always been the question about the dual activated bodies. We have discussions in other episodes from other channels that we all have DNA that can be activated. And that is certainly a possibility. That's what Barbara Marciniak says with the Pleiadians. Ra claims that only a few people have these fourth density bodies that can be activated at the same time. And it was only a very small number back in the 80s when they did the original channeling. Now they're saying one third of the 8 billion people on this planet have dual activated bodies. We will see this change the world. These might be young kids right now, but that means that they have a greater sensitivity to the fourth density particles of light, meaning they have a greater connection to that other world. They can see colors, they can see energies, they can tune into things. And as they say, we're not going to necessarily see the supernatural powers at the beginning, but eventually we will. This is going to be a big deal and it's going to change and shape the future of the world. I've been thinking about this for a long time and we have confirmation that that is happening. I don't think I have a dual activated body. I'd like to know. I really don't think I do. I think I'm stuck within this third density. But there are people out there that clearly do have dual activated bodies. And it may mean just a different level of awareness. You have two bodies activated at the same time, a third density and a fourth density body. So take that for what it is. Also a very important discussion of the news and the idea that we need to have the news to understand what's happening in the world. We don't want to ignore it. They're not telling us to ignore the news, but we should watch the news very hesitantly because behind it all, there are motivations, manipulations, groups in power that are trying to manipulate on all sides of the news. Whoever is listening to me, don't think, oh yeah, that one side, they're all bad. They're all bad, but we still need to follow the news because we're a part of this and we just not need to access the news with a greater understanding that most likely what we're listening to is not the entire truth, is not accurate. And perhaps the Cartoon Network is the greatest source of news. There's some really interesting interactions here with Quo that I find very humorous. Quo comes out with a sort of sense of humor in these channelings. I found it interesting that when Gary asks whether or not he's a wanderer, they refuse to answer. Now, Quo doesn't always do that. There have been several previous channelings where when asked, Quo would say, yeah, you're a wanderer. It would be a question I would ask Quo because of their past history of answering that question. So I relate to his question and it's interesting. They're saying it doesn't matter if you are a wanderer or not. And that's important. Something I've had to learn. 
don't worry about it. It doesn't matter. You're in this particular simulation density experience now, and it doesn't matter if you're a wanderer or a star seed. Don't identify with that. Live in this life. Don't make that part of your journey. It's important if you feel as Jim McCarty said, it's most likely that you are a wanderer if you're following stuff like this. But it's not the most important thing. So there's a lot of other interesting stuff here that we learn a little bit more about Maldek and Mars. We actually get some new information about Mars and how the biosphere broke apart and some of the weapons may have been related to water. And we also get some more information about Maldek the weaponry and technology they were using went into the core of the planet, which was part of the reason it was so destructive. It's two little bits of information that we add to all the plethora of information we've gathered before. Take of it what you will. You can find all episodes of The Reality Revolution at therealityrevolution.com. Check out the Quo playlist for further information from Quo or the Law of One playlist for further discussion of Raw. I am sending love and light to everyone that's listening or watching this video. Welcome to the Reality Revolution. Mm -hmm.